All right, so number two, caffeine consumption. Part A, the researcher wishes to estimate the difference in population mean uh, caffeine consumption using a 95% confidence interval. She would like to use a pool procedure. She notes that two sample standard deviations are somewhat similar. Would like to be further assured by examining Levine's test results. So Levine's test results are supplied for you right here by SPSS. Uh, part one of Part A, clearly state the null hypothesis for Levine's test, and this is just something that you need to memorize. Null hypothesis is simply that uh, sigma squared 1 is equal to sigma squared 2, or essentially that both population variances uh, are equal. So the first population variance is denoted by sigma squared 1, second one is denoted by sigma, sigma squared 2, and Levine's test, the null hypothesis for Levine's test, uh, assumes that both of these are equal. So that's for part one. Part two, explain how Levine's test result supports her decision to pool, and you need to include the numerical values. So SPSS already done, has already done Levine's test for you, and they provide the p-value for the test in this box, which is denoted by sig. So the p-value is 0.4, which is quite high. And because the p-value of 0.4 is larger than the general significance level for Levine's test, which we normally take to be 0.10, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis of equal population variances. So this p-value is greater than 0.10, which is our alpha. Um, so that's for part one. Next part, part B. In order to create the pooled confidence interval, an estimate of all the common of the common population standard deviation must be obtained. What is the value of this estimate? And show all works. So it's very easy if you just refer to your uh, yellow formula card that you'll be provided. If you go to the box labeled two population means on the back of the card, I believe. Go to the section labeled pooled, and then you will look at the box entitled standard error. So you're going to see the formula for SP. So SP is the symbol for the um, estimate of the common population standard deviation. So you just plug all the values provided in the problem into this formula. So you're going to have SP is equal to SP is equal to uh, N1 minus 1 times S squared, uh, S1 squared plus N2 minus 1 times S2 squared all over N1 plus N2 minus uh, 2, and then you squared all that. So we'll just plug in all the values right here. 72 minus 1 times 60.97 squared plus 64 minus 1 times 48.89 squared all over 72 plus 64 minus 2, and then you just have to square root all this. So that's a general setup for um, the value of SP, and then you can plug all these values into your calculator, and eventually you'll end up with 55.6184. Remember to include four decimal places, and that'll be your final answer. Um, so that's for part B, and Lastly, we'll do part C. Consider the following statement written by the researcher in a report. It is not quite correct. Change one word in the final statement to make it correct. So the original statement reads, with 95% confidence, we would estimate the difference in sample mean caffeine consumption, uh, college minus high school, to be between negative 0 0.1, uh, negative 0 0.01 to 37.79 mg. So this is a statement that refers to confidence intervals. So if you recall the correct definition for confidence interval, you'll note that they do not refer to the sample mean. They actually refer to the population mean. So all we need to do is cross out the word sample in this statement and put in population. And that's that for question two.